There is a beautiful expression in James chapter 2. Mercy triumphs over judgment. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. James 2.13 It's possible that when you come to ask God for his mercy, he could say no. Imagine if this happens when you pray to ask for his mercy because you did not have mercy on your brother. The effect of saying Kerialeison, or Lord have mercy, stops because of not having mercy on your brother. You can say Kerialeison a hundred times, but if you did not have mercy on your brother, Kerialeison doesn't work. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Instead of judging others, be merciful. Do not judge people or give them what you think they deserve. Have mercy on them. Do not count their mistakes. What if God were to do the same to you? Mercy triumphs over judgment means that you should have mercy more than judgments. Many of us act as if they are judges of other people's actions. God, who is the only true judge, does not judge. He has mercy on us. Mercy triumphs over judgment means that you should be generous. What you do to people will come back to you. If not here, it will be in heaven. Be generous in forgiving others, in asking about their well-being, in your compassion for them. Be generous, be tender, forgive, shield, cover, give, give more. Give people more chances. God gives you many. Give more than what is needed. His Holiness Pope Shenouda lived by this concept. If someone asked him for 5,000 pounds, he studied the request and then gave more than what had been requested. He was imitating God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Give people excuses. Some servants blame the poor for not having jobs. Take it easy. You are not going there to blame them and say that these people do not want to work. Let's encourage them to work. But do not just blame or judge. Ignorance, poverty, and many other reasons are what led them to this situation. Solve these problems. Do not mock them for being unemployed or dirty. They are the ones who will deliver us to heaven. Help them resolve their issues instead. Also, give with respect and joy. If you know how important these poor people are, you will not disrespect them. You will treat them with respect and talk about them with dignity. This is a common mistake, even for us, priests. They sometimes act with bad manners. No one has taught them about etiquette. But in fact, they are the important ones, more important than rich people. Do not disrespect them, tolerate them, and listen to them. Matthew twenty-five thirty-four. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. God is preparing the kingdom for you while you are working and doing this service. Imagine that you have a contractor who builds a villa for you in a prestigious place. You put all your money into this building. When you work with the poor and the sick, you are paying for your villa in heaven. Not literally, of course, but the kingdom of heaven is being prepared for you. You are preparing for your eternity by your love for the poor and the sick. Jesus also said, Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Your treasure is the amount of mercy and prayer in your life. That's the true treasure, the treasure that will never be stolen nor rusted up. It is said in the Psalms, He has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever, his horn will be exalted with honor. Psalm 112, 9. And also in 2 Corinthians 9, 10. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. This means that when you give and disperse, you will find your seeds and food multiply. This means that even here on earth, you will not get poorer if you give. Do not be afraid of that. Even if you give half your money, you will not be in need. Luke 16.9 Make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home.